My name is Julia Berg, and together with my colleague, I think here, <laughs> uh, Joshua Witz, we are the project lead of the Responsible Research and Innovation Hub at RWTH Aachen University. And unfortunately, our third speaker cannot be here today, but we will shortly introduce her as well. Uh, Carm Leichtscholten is the director of our hub, and so she's also part of the presentation, even if she cannot be here. So, but what are we going to talk about today? Um, a recent study by Stifterverband and McKinsey shows that universities have generally coped well with the short-term changeover to digital teaching in the recent months. Before the Corona crisis, only 12% of the courses at universities had a digital format, but in the summer 2020, 91% of all courses used a digital method. So we think that we can say COVID-19 is a catalyst for digitization and that digital teaching was the new, new normal format for us as a lecturer and also maybe for the students as well. But the study also shows that uh, the change of teaching formats in larger groups was positively evaluated, but the change to in larger groups was not so positively evaluated. So we would like to discuss two of these points in our talk. So at the one hand, we will look at how a seminar using research-based learning can be organized digitally in the first part of our presentation. And afterwards, we would like to take a look at the results of a study among 500 or more than 500 students, uh, which we did in the semester to see what they think about the digital semester. And at the end, we would like to discuss with you what we can learn from the results of our talk and what universe, maybe also universities can learn from the results. So let's start with our learning concept. So as many lecturers this year, we also had to digitize an existing teaching format uh, quickly before the semester starts. And in our institute traineeship, a civil engineering students should have the opportunity to get insights into social science research and reuse a research-based teaching format for this, this institute traineeship. So our challenge was to digitize a research-based teaching format, which is characterized by an active participation of the, of the students. And as we also wanted to address the the current situation of students during the pandemic. We changed our topic of the institute traineeship at short notice and uh, addressed the situation of students during the corona crisis. So let's take a more detailed view on the institute traineeship. This year, 54 engineering students attended our institute traineeship and at the beginning of the semester, they were divided into 10 different groups. So each student could get five credit points at the end of the semester. And as examination, we used a term paper this year and also a short, short poster pitch. So, and following a research-based teaching concept. The students went through different phases of the research process during the semester. And in the first session, we started with a short introduction to the topic, what challenges and opportunities do students see in the corona pandemic? And especially the topic was positively evaluated at the end of the semester by the students. As they said, for example, it was very up to date and interesting to work on such an up to date topic. And even if we, if the research topic was set by us as the lecturers, each of the 10 groups could choose their own research question for the term paper. And for example, one group dealt with the impact of the pandemic on the well-being of the students, while another group focused on whether or how uh, the pandemic has an influence on work and higher education in the future. And <clears throat> 
Afterwards, the research overview was conducted by each group based on the research question. And due to the contact restrictions and the number of students, which was relatively large for the Institute traineeship with 54 students, we chose an online survey as the research method for this semester. And in the seminar, we discussed the structure of the questionnaire with the students. So the, the questionnaire consisted of five different parts, but I will explain that later in the next slide. And each of the 10 groups then developed an introduction to the questionnaire and a couple of questions. And we collected all questions afterwards. Um, and then started the peer review process and the pretest so that all students had the possibility to give feedback to their fellow students on the introductions and the research questions. And moreover, um, <laughs> so we, we voted on the introductions and similarly formulated questions using the uh, survey function in Zoom. And at the end of the semester, most of the students stated that they really liked the possibility to actively participate in the decision making process in a lecture or in a seminar. And after implementing the changes in the survey tool, we finished and published the questionnaire on our uh, survey tool. And then the data was collected by the students and analyzed afterwards in the groups, so in the 10 groups. And the last step of the uh, research process, the reflection, as well as the evaluation of the data took place in the groups as well. And for example, in the context of the term paper. And also according to the evaluation, the students really liked working on a research topic on their own. So now, uh, sorry. It's not working. Hmm. I cannot. Ah, no. Sorry. So now, after explaining a couple of facts about our uh, teaching concept, we will go on with the survey which was conducted by the students. So, as I said before, the structure of the questionnaire was that we had five different parts in the questionnaire. So, for example, the first part had some questions about the living situation of the students or about studying from home. The second part contained questions about the pandemic regulations and the third part about the satisfaction of needs of the students. And the last two parts included questions about the well-being as well as, for example, about the age, gender and other demographic data of the respondents. And all in all, 555 five students uh, did our questionnaire between May 22 and June 15. And yes, as all of them were students, the average age was 22. And we had 258 males or men and 290 women in our, as our respondents. And so I think I will hand over to my colleague Joscha about the results. Thank you, Julia. Um, before we take a closer look um, at selected items and results, we'd like to share one open question with you. Um, you will find the link to our Mentimeter right now um, in the chat. So please feel free to share with, uh, with us what is your key insight with regards to the digital semester? And we will get back to your answers in our um, spotlight session at the end, where we will also answer your questions you might be raising in the meantime. And moving on to the first item, you will find the item on the left-hand side, the overall results of our questionnaire on the right-hand side and highlighted below one key insight we want to emphasize today. And by asking the students about their perceived productivity, 55% of the students indicated that they strongly disagree with the statement that um, they have been more productive lately. Moving on to our next item, 
you can see that referring to the possible places to study, so at home or on campus, 39% of them agreed that they can pursue their studies from home. And at that point, I'd like to move over to Julia again. Thank you. Um, uh, sorry. No. Yes, we also asked uh, or regarded the required infrastructure such, such as internet access or laptops and the majority, so 90% of all respondents said that that they possess the necessary infrastructure, for example, for online teaching. And, uh, sorry. So, and since the pandemic has caused a loss of part-time jobs for many students, we also asked the participants whether the possibility of having a part-time job had worsened and about 49% uh, of the respondents agreed that the possibility of pursuing a part-time job has worsened. So I will hand over to you. Yes, the next question referred to the financial burden and 23% indicated that they are burdened by a current change in their financial situation which has a direct impact on their possibility to finance their studies. Moving on um, to the question that with regards to the digital semester overall, about 68% considered a burden that teaching only takes place online. And right now we will be moving on to the open questions of our questionnaire. Yes, thank you. Um, in addition to more than 20 closed questions, we also included two open questions in the questionnaire um, on how the pandemic has influenced the, the, uh, the possibilities for individual development positively or negatively. And we have summarized the the topics in three categories and as negative points, the participants named, for example, closed sport facilities and then not enough time for sports or not enough sports. And more than 150 respondents also named isolation. So no social contacts, no face-to-face -face events, and therefore also no contact to fellow students. And moreover, more than 50 respondents said that the mental stress was a negative influence. So, for example, they said significantly more stress due to postponed exams or more difficult study situation. But also some points are mentioned positively. For example, more than 250 people, which is more which is about half of the respondents positively highlighted more time. So more time for cooking, more time for creativity. And also some people mentioned more time for myself, more time for self-reflection. And also online lectures were, were positively highlighted, but only by less than 20 people. So uh, but for example, some students said some courses are even better online than in the lecture hall. And another one, for example, said that they attended more lectures. We are now entering our spotlight session, um, which is meant for you to raise questions. Um, we've received one question in the chat already and a couple of answers um, to our Mentimeter question. Um, therefore, I'd like to at first um, share the screen with the answers you entered with you. And afterwards, feel free um, to um, present yourself, show yourself and join us in a short discussion. Right now, you should be able to see um, the overall results um, you shared with us. Um, I'd like to point out <laughs> there are 
as our um, question I already had shown, um, there are very different ways of experiencing um, the digital semester depending on quite a bunch of factors. Right now, I'd like to open this question up um, for you. Um, is there something you would like uh, the group? Um, so please feel free to step forward right now. So I guess we can just switch to answering the question which has been raised. Uh, Julia, would you like to take over right here? Yes, sure. So we had a part about well-being and the mental well-being. Um, I we asked them, for example, even if they perceive more stress at the moment. So I think it was about. Yeah, forty percent of the students said that they perceive more stress, which, which is all also obviously in the open questions where people. This was very interesting. From the five hundred fifty-five students, I think about four hundred fifty people answered the open questions, and they did not need to answer the questions in the questionnaire. So we were kindly surprised that so many people answered the open questions and they were very interesting as the students were very, yeah, they said they which problems they really have. It was much with isolation, so no contact with family or no contact with friends and they, they have like a fear to to visit family or grandmother, grandfather. And it was also a problem to motivate for motivation. So that they said they cannot motivate themselves to learn at home. So they need, for example, the situation at the at the university to learn with other students or something like that. And this was I for me, this was very interesting to see which problems they really have. And they were very yeah, surprising. Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm <laughs> here. I, I raised this question. Thank you, Julia, for answering this question. I'm I have to say I'm very much interested in these findings as you know, when we plan our next semester, um, I really would like to uh, include all these issues or acknowledge them in, in a way that um, we do not expect the same motivation, for example, as you just mentioned, and also to appreciate these uh, very difficult circumstances. And uh, as far as I know, they, they will continue at, at some point or to some extent, uh, and it's very individual. Uh, responses uh, in terms of mental well-being. So, um, so my question is: Can we further see some of your results uh, uh, you you produced? Uh, this is very very important, and uh, I don't know how you're going to publish or to communicate these findings because I like to refer to them and also to to make use uh, of these results to better prepare my own uh, lectures in the next semester. And uh, just to refer to a second input I provided, I um, put in in the questionnaire or the Mentimeter. Uh, um, I've seen many black windows. So as a teacher, um, I had to get used to it, but I found it also very annoying and disappointing at some point. And I, I think we are just learning a culture of how we use these tools. And um, so what I did, I asked my students, at least when they, um, listen to me and when they speak to turn on the cameras um, because uh, giving a small group i i i found it very kind of disturbing sometimes uh, that's the only picture i see is myself and uh, i think you know even your feedback now and smiling is sort of feedback to me and what i say and uh, it influences my way of talking in the next sentence so i think these sort of visual connections we need to really uh at least I need to have them uh, to 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 speak better, to uh, respond in a better way. So I think we we still need to learn and set up standards and talk about um, 
you know, all the opportunities we have with these tools, but also how to use them and to uh, overcome some of the fears some people might have that they see my private bookshelf in the background and things like this, which I can understand. And we we need to um, agree to some point uh, or for some um, decisions. And uh, so it's a learning process I'm uh, taking part as we all do. So thank you. Yeah, thank you too. This is exactly the same thing we uh, we had in the in the last semester. We had a much of black windows, and I think it was interesting when I had my online office hours where I talked to the to the groups in in the small groups of the ten groups. All of them had their picture on, so <laughs> it was not the problem that they did not want to show themselves to me maybe but in the in the lecture with all the 50 students no one had his picture on so i don't know what to do but maybe i thought about doing something like a code of conduct in the next semester so that maybe in the first session we can talk with the students what they what they expect and what we expect and maybe then motivate them to to show their pictures and to also maybe unmute themselves when they have questions but because in our in our seminar it was mostly the case that they asked the questions in the chat and not not and did not unmute themselves so that they can ask the questions so that everyone can hear them. And the first question about the publication of the results, I think we we will publish the results maybe in the paper, but we are not, not that far with the paper. But I don't know, I have to look it up if it's, for example, also possible to share the, to share the results of the questionnaire, but I think I have first have to look it up if this is possible. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, and thank uh, you. maybe others will share their experiences with black screens and other yeah. aspects. So I turn myself now uh, unmute and also invisible. Thank you. Thank you. Another question um, has just popped up. Thank you. Um, it's referring to um, the element of in encouraging uh, students. Um, and this is something um, Julia and I also talked a lot about um, quite recently in terms of um, how to curate and select uh, sufficient tools and platforms, online tools and platforms um, to encourage um, the students as well as everyone who might be joining in in those digital formats. And um, we look at it from a community engagement point of view. So we try to actually come up with a certain um, roadmap of creating a community in a digital working environment. And this is strongly connected to um, what has been mentioned before, um, the culture. Um, the culture of digitization at universities and um, the willingness to actually um, try out something new. And there are some points on the Mentimeter I want to emphasize in that regard. Um, E-learning works after all. And um, another one, suddenly all lecturers are able to teach digitally and it's not as bad as suspected. Um, this is definitely something we experienced as well. Um, and it has been pointed out in the recent study of the Stifterverband, Julia mentioned recently that um, once we have stepped into this um, unknown uh, area for some and for others not that much of an unknown area, um, we could actually figure out that it's um, working very well and we can focus on fine-tuning um, digital formats right now. Okay. See a short discussion. No more questions right now. Um, I will stop the screen sharing. Um, one last time, the question, if there are any open questions from your side.
If not, uh, and with a short glimpse at that clock, which is running, um, we'd like to break it down. Um, and we structured our key insights uh, on three levels. Um, the key insights for us as teaching personnel. Um, the main factor, of course, is um, being comfortable with this digital environment yourself, um, being willing to engage with the tools and platforms which are there. And furthermore, um, the factor of um, choosing a current topic um, has been one of the key elements um, for us um, to overcome, or let's put it in other words, to create urgency um, up to a certain extent. In terms of the hub, the project um, we are responsible for, which is um, focusing on the intersections of science and society on a regional level, um, we're trying to balance um, digital and non-digital um, meeting spaces or engagement spaces, um, which is also a very interesting question um, and leading to the university level. And on the university level, the key element has been uh, mentioned already, um, a change of culture, which is related to a process of organizational development. We have proved that universities are able to cope um, with the digital semester, and I'm not talking about um, RWTH Aachen, but I'm talking about all universities right now. Um, the response has been sufficient in many ways. And now we can focus on the details of how to actually translate um, the qualities of non-digital learning into the digital working space and carefully balance um, digital and non-digital formats in the upcoming future, which might be the new normal um, we are talking about uh, during this um, festival. Thank you very much um, for your attention, for your time. And um, feel free to get in touch with us um, right after this event. Um, and we are looking forward um, to talk to you at any other occasion. Thank you. Thank you.